Welcome to Serlakios. It's a museum. This place is a home for a multitude of exhibitions. And this statue here in the park is especially unique to me. It looks ordinary at first, a little bit cubist, but it holds some secrets. You see, it's actually moving throughout the day. The artwork is called Black Sun Dial, and it's made by Keith Tyson, a British-based conceptual artist. And the name Black Sundial comes from this idea. The finger you see pointing at different directions throughout the day is actually pointing towards the black hole in the middle of the Milky Way. And the name of that black hole is Sagittarius A. Now I will share some interesting facts about the black hole. The name Sagittarius A comes from Latin. Sagitta means arrow and Sagittare means archer. It's been used to call uh, the constellation Sagittarius all the way back from the 14th century and if you've seen the name Sagittarius A written down before you may have seen that there is always an asterisk after the A there is an interesting story behind that in quantum physics the asterisk in the name is used to indicate an excited state of an atom. So when the scientists, astronomers found this black hole, they put the asterisk at the end of the word because the scientists were so excited by this finding. Well, was this the black hole that we imaged for the first time some years back? Well, actually no, and there's a few reasons for it. Even though this might be the closest supermassive black hole to us, uh, it's not the biggest one, not by far. There are many, many times more bigger ones. Sagittarius A is two to four million times the mass of our sun. And for example, one of the black holes that we have found called Messier 87, M87, is four billion times the mass of our sun. And this M87 was the first black hole that we found. Before we didn't know what lies in the middle of our galaxies, but nowadays it is used to believe that there is always a supermassive black hole or even ultramassive black hole in the middle of the galaxies. There are still a number of mysteries around this science, but this finding of the black holes has given us a lot of good theories. Maybe the black hole is the thing that gives birth to these galaxies that, for example, we are in, called Milky Way. I mentioned ultramassive black holes. 
There are different categories of black holes. There are stellar mass black holes, which are 2 to 10 times the mass of our Sun. There could be even hundreds of millions of them in our Milky Way alone. And then there are supermassive black holes. And those are in the million times of the mass of our Sun. And then there are ultramassive black holes. And those go to billions. For example, one of the biggest ultramassive black holes that we have found is called Ton 618. And that one is 66 billion times the mass of our Sun. And to set some scale, our Sun is 1.2 million times the mass of the Earth. Now I would like to thank uh, a video from Curious Plus and also some videos by Michio Kaku for providing me with these facts. The reasons why we didn't find the black hole in the middle of our galaxy first lie in the size because it's smaller than the ones that we could find in the other uh, space. And then there is this kind of like a cloud formation, I think it's called Oort Cloud, that is blocking our vision to capture the center of our own galaxy in the best possible way. Now there were a lot of good things coming with the launch of JWST which is uh, short for James Webb Space Telescope and we have actually gotten some interesting information with this telescope. Partly thanks to the location of this telescope. When we launched it, we used our physics knowledge to set it on this Lagrange point in space. Lagrange points are these um, gravitational hotspots between different stars and planets. We can calculate them and they are basically these points where there is no mass but there is a center of gravity because the forces that are uh, in contact with it, the gravitational forces, they are equal from all sides. And I think the point where JWST landed was called L2, Lagrange 2. But it's so interesting to me that we are able to use our knowledge to do these type of wonderful things. So the L2 point is a lot further away from Earth and also to the side in the galactic space-time coordinates. So it's able to obtain much more uh, vivid imagery from the center of our galaxy. And then there are some state-of-the-art imaging technology, mainly on the infrared region. So we are just using different new technology to capture these images. So, so far we have been able to get image proof of the existence of black holes for quite a number of them. I also learned that um, the black holes, they give radio signals and that's how we know that they are there too. Not just images of the void, but also the radio waves that are coming from the middle of the black hole. There are still a number of mysteries around black holes. We may be 
grasping at straws when we think about them but I personally think that it's a wonderful thing that we are finding out and doing research and it's also a nice place to just let your mind wonder that what could this mean? How do these galaxies form? All these fascinating things. What is this existence on this rock in space? And how it feels so mundane at times and even calm. But when you look at the cosmological scale, there is so much happening that we don't know of. And I like to play with this idea that if you zoom out far enough, you may see different type of movement. Maybe some patterns. And in a blink of that motion could lie the whole existence of our Earth and the species that have evolved in it and the death of everything and it's just this tiny tiny blimp in the grand scheme of things it may make us seem very unimportant and minuscule but at the same time I do think that there is something very very special well I know that there is something very special in this organic life that we inhabit here because being alive makes us a witness to all of this and we may ask ourselves would anything be if there wasn't anything to witness it maybe it's a tautology but uh, I'd like to say that us just being alive makes everything have meaning just because we are witnessing it. I didn't really talk about what is a black hole that's because my knowledge in that is very so and so but i could try to reminisce some of the facts that i think i have when a huge star collapses there are a number of things that can happen to it depending on the mass of it and maybe some luck of entropy as well but if it's not as big it will turn into a neutron star which is a tightly packed star they are usually very small but they weigh hundreds and hundreds of times the mass of our sun they are uh, very interesting beast of their own too but if the stars are even bigger something weird happens in the space-time it looks like a glitch even well the whole star collapses to the point in the middle of it in less than a second and it seems that it breaks the space-time and even switches it the time and space kind of like switch their place so there is this infinite point in the middle where everything gets sucked in the collapse of a star releases an enormous amount of energy 
and that energy gets swung around this the, this newly formed black hole as well as sucked into the inside of this black hole and when we have seen pictures and even like the black hole in the movie uh, Interstellar I think that one is called Gargantua uh, the, the light around the black hole is this mass of energy just moving around this black hole and we can't for certain know what happens if you get sucked in but we can use our knowledge of physics to get a idea of what could happen and uh, there is this Schwarzschild radius which is basically the point of no return if you go inside that there is no way of you coming back from the black hole to this space-time just because it's pulling you in faster than the speed of light could travel away from it and they use this term called spaghettification where our body would just turn into a spaghetti inside this black hole it's kind of a ruthless image but uh, also kind of neat by the way it could be that the neutron star and black holes are not the only thing that can happen there's some recent development in the astronomy about uh, I think they were called Kravatars which are so massive that they could even eat black holes there was a good video about them and in that video they said that what happens in the formation of a Kravatar is uh, it's basically like a hydraulic press to the mass so it's not forming a black hole but it's just pulling everything together with such a force that it creates this enormous gravatar and imagine all of this is happening everywhere all right so thank you for listening to my video and I'll see you soon in some other ASMR related, maybe even space related videos. Bye bye.